Okay, guys, here we go. SpaceX style landing. I better do this this time. It's my fifth attempt and I still couldn't really do it correctly. Here we go. Ready? Steady. And three, two, one. Suicide burn. I can do it. I can do it. So close. Yes, that's right. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. And, and, no. Yes. Yes. No, no, too fast. No. And, no. So close. Overstressed. I cannot possibly do it. I, I'm not Scott Manoway. I've tried it so many times. So instead, this is what we're going to do today. We're going to write a Python script using KRPC to essentially do it for us automatically. We're going to learn how to land pretty much anywhere. This script will be universal. No matter how difficult the conditions are, no matter how bad you are at landing. And this is not going to be a Mac job. This is going to be our own script that you can use anytime. Anyway, let's explore this. Let's learn a little bit of more about Python and KRPC and welcome to what the math. <laughs> Now, if you haven't seen the previous videos, you may actually want to check them out because I do explain a lot of these commands in a little bit more detail. But today, our goal is to use this tiny script right here, which I'm going to explain to you in a second, to essentially land our craft on Kerbin. This means that you can actually use this to land pretty much any craft, uh, although this one might be really pushing it because there's just not enough fuel, but uh, it should be possible with pretty much everything. This means that you will be able to land on any moon, any um, planet, and also, most importantly, you'll be able to kind of write your own scripts for doing not just landings, but specific... And this also means that we can now have a script that uh, basically takes us to space, orbits the craft, and then lands it on Kerbin. Today, we're just going to land, we're not actually going to aim at anything, and in the next video, we're going to land specifically very, very close to KSC, just like you see right here. So how does the script work? Let me actually explain it to you first. And we're actually are going to use this craft right here from the last video that we launched in the orbit around Corbin. We're going to use uh, this craft to basically land somewhere on Corbin, hopefully maybe over here somewhere. Uh, and which actually means I need to now move my craft, warp it to this location here. So what exactly are we going to do? Let me explain to you what's happening in the script that we're going to be using. And, and then we're going to launch the script and see how it goes. So just like in the previous videos, it kind of starts the same way. We, we connect to the KRPC server and we have uh, a few predefined variables. And here, these two are actually the frame of reference. One of them is the surface frame of reference and one of them is the orbital frame of reference, which refers to this. Uh, orbital frame of reference has this speed while surface has this speed. In other words, your orbital speed currently is higher than your surface speed. And um, this is obviously because Kerbin is actually spinning. Now, um, we also have a few more things here, specifically these three streams that are constantly retrieving the variables from the craft. This is basically a telemetry. It's retrieving orbital speed, surface speed, and altitude. And the command for this, for all of them, is here. This is all from the KRPC... Um, tutorial, which you can actually go to yourself. Uh, the link for this is in, in previous videos and also in the description for this video as well. Uh, basically, they are all available right here on the Space Center, and this is under Vessel, I believe. So we are actually retrieving one of these commands that you can find here from the flight of the vessel. So you can retrieve g-force, mean altitude, surface altitude, bedrock altitude, elevation, and so forth. Uh, we are going to start by printing the orbiting vessel. That's just for us to know that the actual command is working. Uh, this is not really necessary. I kind of just thought to include this because it's a slightly different command. But what this does is basically it clicks this button here and switches to surface measurements instead of orbital references. Uh, this, this is just to see things a little bit more visually. This is new though. Uh, here we have a variable that starts the autopilot. It then engages SAS and sets SAS to retrograde, which basically means this. Engage, retrograde. Uh, the reason we're doing this is because we want our craft to be pointing away from the vector of velocity so that you can actually slow down by firing your engines in the opposite direction. We're then waiting for 10 seconds because my craft is really slow, as you can see. It takes it about 10 seconds to turn around, so it will 
take 10 seconds to turn, and then we start our first loop, with, which basically does a very, very simple thing. It checks for the periapsis, which is currently right here. And as soon as it starts firing the engine, the periapsis is going to start dropping. And as soon as the periapsis reaches zero, it stops firing the engines. That's all this command does. It checks if it's over zero, and once it is over zero, the loop stops, and the throttle is set to zero. Then, this new loop here doesn't do absolutely anything, but it waits until 50 kilometers. So until you reach the altitude of 50 kilometers, nothing happens. After this, it actually starts checking for speed, and if your speed is too high, specifically over 1500, it will actually slow down. Now, this part is absolutely optional. This is specifically meant for Minecraft, which just so happens that it's not really resilient when it comes to re-entry. As a matter of fact, I tried it several times, my engine always explodes, the legs and the body also usually explode, so I had to slow down. Your craft might be more resilient, so you might not even need to include this. Uh, but this part is important. Until about 10 kilometers, I don't do anything, but then I check if my speed is over 500. And if it is over 500, we actually slow down because you don't want to go that fast um, at these altitudes. Uh, if you are using like parachutes or something, or drag parachutes specifically, you might not even need this, but I don't have drag parachutes, so I'm going to be doing it this way. Uh, this is also important for other bodies that don't have atmosphere. So like, for example, on the moon, you might want to check these uh, in more detail. Uh, until 2 kilometers, nothing happens, and then after 2 kilometers, if our speed is over 200, we slow down, and now we start doing more regular checks, but only after the altitude of 300. So there's actually four of these loops where I kind of just let the craft fall down and do nothing. After 300, from about 50 meters to 300 meters, this is where the actual uh, major slowdown happens. So here, this is what, what we're going to do. If our speed is over a certain limit, we're going to engage the engine and slow down. The way I measure the speed is by basically looking at the altitude and dividing it by 5. So like for example, if currently my altitude is 200 meters, my speed has to be approximately 40 meters per second. No more than 40 meters per second. If it's more than 40 meters per second, it will slow down. At 100, it's going to be 20 meters per second. At 50, it's going to be 10 meters per second. If your speed is uh, somewhere in between, it will just throttle a little bit, just to not completely turn off the engine. And if, if you're going too slow, if you basically just froze in the air, it will turn off the engine completely. And so until 50 meters, you're going to be checking this, but then from 50 down to 2 meters, this is what you're doing. If your speed is over 7, you're going to uh, use only half the throttle. If your speed is under 7, you turn off throttle completely. The reason I, I made this 0.5 and not 1 is because at this point you don't have any amount, enough fuel left, so your craft is going to be very light, it's going to be very, very easy to throttle up um, and basically increase the speed. So you don't need to use 1 anymore. And lastly, right as soon as it crosses 2, it will completely turn off the engines and basically, hopefully gently, falls to the ground. So that's kind of what we're using here. And well, so let's uh, deorbit this craft. Let's see how the script works and find out if everything was set up correctly. I actually just realized I do need to modify a few numbers because I forgot to change the numbers from my moon landing. So I'm going to show you what I changed here. Uh, let me just pause the game for a second. So first of all, I actually changed this value to 1700 because 1500 was a little bit too low and I just wanted to show you how this craft does start burning at um, if you have a speed of 1700. And this is why I even have these lines. These are absolutely optional. And I also increased this check from 300 to 1200. And that's because I want to be safe rather than being sorry when I'm landing on Kerbin. Uh, if, if it is 300, it might work if you have a powerful engine. Uh, with this craft, it, it's sort of a gamble. So let me show you what I mean by this. Uh, so, but anyway, let's just start the script. It's going to say the orbiting vessel. It's going to turn toward retrograde. And right about now, it's going to start firing engines. Uh, remember, this is a 10 second wait. And this basically decreased our periapsis to zero. So right now we're definitely re-entering atmosphere. I don't really know where we're going to be landing. I tried to make, make it so that we land near Kerbal Space Center. Let's accelerate time. Um, the first check will happen at 50 kilometers. And if our speed is too fast, it will slow down. So let's just accelerate. At exactly 50 kilometers, if the speed is over 1700, that's the optional line that I showed you before, the optional line right here, these five lines, 
it will check for speed and decelerate. Your craft might not need this actually. If you have um, either a really good engine uh, that doesn't burn very easily, or better even heat shields, you won't need this line. Or if you have uh, drag chutes that you can use to slow down. I don't have those, so I needed to have this line because otherwise this craft doesn't really survive. So right around here, it will stop burning, and now it just kind of free falls into the atmosphere. Okay, looks like we are going to our Herbal Space Center, um, and we're going to be passing these mountains that I really, really don't like landing here because they make my life very difficult. Uh, hopefully we won't be landing on the mountain, actually. And so at around 10 kilometers, it will check if our speed is over 500. Uh, and if it is over 500, so that's, that's the lines right here, uh, it will decelerate again. If it's not over 500, it will just ignore everything and keep going. And it looks like the way we're going right now, our speed is going to be under 500. Yep, we slow down enough so this, this part of the script will not trigger. It will then move on to the next part um, where it just waits until 2 kilometers. And this is where it checks for speed of um, 200. If the speed is over 200, it slows down. If it's not, it keeps going. And then the last part begins where at 1200 we'll start checking very specific speeds and basically start landing the craft using a kind of a version of a suicide burn. It's not a perfect suicide burn, but it's as close to perfection as I could get in basically just a few lines of code. So this is where things get really difficult. This is basically the most difficult part. So right now we just have to watch, pray and hope everything goes well. So first burn, two kilometers. Second burn, this is it. Uh, it's checking speed according to altitude. And now uh, from 300 to 50, it's going to basically do these micro burns and try to land very gently using specific speeds. Here we go. So seven meters per second is what it's checking for. And boom. All right. There you go. So this script works pretty much most of the time. I've only had a few problems with it where it actually um, was not really using the correct uh, surface altitude values. Usually this happens in the mountains actually, because if you have too much slope, uh, it will measure the value here. Usually it happens in the mountains when you have too much slope. So if you have a value here and it's that's what it's measuring, suddenly the slope decreases, it will actually start making errors. Uh, but this works on pretty much every major object, and this is exactly the same script that we're going to be using when we land on the moon in one of the future episodes. Well, anyway, so that's kind of all I wanted to show you in this video. Now you have the script that you can use to land pretty much anywhere on any object. And in the next video, what we're going to do is we're going to add a few lines of code to the script that will make this almost always land in the location near Kerbal Space Center, which is, where is it? Somewhere over there. No, it's, I think... Okay, mountains are here, so KSC is, I guess, there? Uh, oh, there it is, over there. So we're going to try to uh, create a script that will always or almost always land us in this location right here. I'm going to show you how I do this, and we're going to talk a little bit more about the script itself. Anyway, thank you for watching, guys. Hopefully you enjoyed this video, and if you did, subscribe, share this video with someone who enjoys Scribble Space Program and wants to learn through video games, and come back to the next video to learn something else about Python and scripts. Space out, and as always, bye-bye. And I actually just have a little bit of fuel left here to even go for a little ride back to space, or at least to a higher altitude. Let's see how much fuel we actually have. Oh, that's, that's a lot. We can actually go to really high altitude here. Luckily, I brought parachutes so I can totally separate the last part and use my parachutes to return back to Kerbin.